Let us all pray. Yahuwah, our almighty and great Father in heaven, we thank you once again, Yahuwah, for you've blessed us each and every day of our lives. You've taken care of us. You've kept us away from harms and dangers. And most of all, you've allowed us to gather here together once again to serve and glorify your most holy name. With all praise and honor, we thank you, Yahuwah, for everything that you've done for our lives. We humbly ask you to please continue to take care of us, provide us the protection that we need, and continue to strengthen our faith in you and continue to help us that we may remain true to the proper way of serving and glorifying you. So all the more you will receive proper honor and glory. We also ask you, Yahuwah, to please bless the offering that we've given unto you today. Let this offering be once again used to further spread your word throughout the land so more people will come to know your name and learn to serve and glorify you. We also ask you to please bless the one who you're utilizing as your instrument today. Provide him the knowledge and wisdom that he needs and <clears throat> let us be able to understand your words today so that we continue <clears throat> to bring honor and glory unto thee. We also ask you, Yahuwah, to once again forgive us for all the many sins that we've committed and make us worthy before your most holy sight as we ask all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen. In the sacred of salvation, gather all faithful boys. Let's proclaim Praise his name, O Yahuwah. Lift our voices in exaltation to our God who reigns on high. With his love, he grants a reaction to his son, Savior Yahusha. Beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, as we study the words of God once again in this homily or this worship service, I should say, we are again being reminded of these verses that we need to always keep in our minds and in our hearts <clears throat> in order for us to have a good life and a healthy body. That is what God wants us to become. At this point, probably in our time of being uh, chosen by God from those whom he called to be part of the very small remnant. By this time, we should have probably, all of us probably, already masters of the laws of God that we can actually explain to other people the faith that we are sharing with them. Unlike when we used to be in the Church of Christ or Iglesia de Cristo, we cannot explain what we believe. We invite people. We tell people of what we believe. But when they ask us, we stop. We cannot go on because we don't truly know the law. And we cannot actually prove by reading in the scriptures what we are telling them. But at this moment, at this time that we became Yahushians, we can. Now, the topic of our lesson today is about salvation, the life that we must tread to be sure, to be certain of our inclusion in the first resurrection or rupture. Why was our title like that? Because our salvation will be given to us, that's what we believe, on the day of the rupture or the first resurrection. Again, we are emphasizing our salvation will not be given or we will not receive it on the day of judgment. That's not for us. That's for those who are not of the Christ. But they do claim they belong to the Christ. That's what they claim. But they believe they will be saved on the day of judgment. It doesn't make sense 
if you believe you belong to the Christ and your salvation will be given to you on the day of judgment. The salvation of those who truly belong to the Christ will be given to them on the day he meets his kahal or his church, the people that will represent the chaste virgin. That's the salvation. And those people will be coming from or being plucked out from the place where God put those who will attain salvation daily, which is the church or the assembly of God's people. That's what we are going to find out. Now we believe and hope for that, for that our salvation will be meted out to us on the day of a Yahusha meeting us in the air. <clears throat> the simplest definition of salvation is to be delivered or rescued from damnation or condemn, condemnation to eternal punishment in hell or what we are familiar with as the lake of fire. The word took a bit more of a shape when we figured out it was connected with the scripture telling us we needed to get saved or we need to be saved or we need salvation. The most common meaning of salvation is to be saved by Yahuwah, our God, through Yahushua, his son, or Yahushua the Christ, from the consequences of our sins. Now, beloved brethren, the Bible speaks of our salvation in a bit fuller term than simply being rescued from hell or the lake of fire. When thinking about salvation, it is helpful, beloved brethren, it is helpful to think about what we are saved from. We are saved from a lake of fire. What we are saved to, we are saved to uh, go to heavens. When we are to receive it, when are we going to receive that salvation? We have to think about that too. First resurrection. And whom we are saved by. We are saved by God through Yahushua's death. Remember, there is no name given to man to attain that salvation, but the name given to his son. The name, not the title given to his son. The title given to his son is none other than Lord and the Christ or Lord and Savior, Lord and Hamashiach. That is the title given to the Son. But the name given to the Son is not Jesus, because he is not Spanish. It must be Yahushua, because it contains the name of God too. The name of God is Yahuwah, which has a meaning, one of the meaning of Yahuwah, is I am who I am. And Yasha means to be saved. So you put that together, Yahu, Shia, it becomes I am he who saves. So God is the one who saves through the name given to his son and the blood also that was poured out. We already know all of those things, beloved brethren. Now, <clears throat> it's also helpful to think about our salvation as past, present, and future happening. Now, what we did, what we are doing, and what we are going to do should be in all constant consideration. <clears throat> and there are steps to be done to be part of that salvation in the first resurrection or the rapture, as the world calls it today. Now, let's consult the scriptures <clears throat> based on what we can read. Based on what we can read, what is the first step for the attainment of salvation in the first resurrection or resurrection or means being with Yahusha, Hamasiach, being his? <clears throat> Let us read what is written in Acts 2.47 in two separate uh, translation of the Bible, New King James Version and Sefer. 
praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Praising Elohim. Elohim is God. Now we are learning a little bit of Hebrew here. Praising Elohim and having favor with all the people. And Yahuwah added to the called out assembly. So the church is also assembly. Daily, such as should be saved. Now remember, we are not going to be saved by that name, church. And we are not going to be saved by that name, assembly. That's not a name. It's like a, 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 it's a noun, but it's not a name of somebody or someone. Now we will be saved by the name of God given to his begotten son. Remember that. So what is the first step for the attainment of salvation in the first resurrection? We must be added first to that assembly or to that church or to that flock or to that body or to that pride. We must always be remembered remembering all of these things you know the body the flock the church the assembly it all means church it all means a group of people okay that's what it meant don't get confused with that thing now which church or assembly or body or flock or which group of people should we be let us read here in acts 20 and the verses 28 watch yourselves and the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as supervisors to shepherd God's church, which he obtained with the death of his own son. Take it unto yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit had made you bishops to feed the church of the Lord, which he purchased with his own blood. Now, which church, which assembly, which body, okay, or which bride, you know, group of people are we supposed to be with? Well, according to what we have heard, Yahushua or Yahuwah's church, God's church, God's assembly, God's flock, or God's body. What is that? The one that he purchased with the death of his own son. Now, who is the son? Well, according to what we have read in another translation, ASB, it's the Lord Yahushua because he is the son who purchased it with his blood. His blood was the one who shed on that uh, cross on Mount Calvary. So the church that belongs to God is also the church that belongs to Yahushua. The church or God's church is also the Lord's church or Yahushua's church. We should be in that assembly. We should be in that body. We should be with that. We should represent, be a representation of the bride that will meet the Lord in the air or the chaste virgin. In another rendition of the Bible, it is also called the, the church of the Lord purchased with his own blood. We affirm, therefore, that the church of the Lord or Yahushua is also the church of God, Yahuwah, the assembly or the flock of people that belongs to Yahuwah confirmed by the prophecies. See, there are lots of people today who we are all claiming. They claim, we claim. Now, what we are telling the world, what we are telling the people who are believers is to investigate which claim is closer to a logical claim, biblical claim, and sensible. Which one? Are you going to be? Where are you going to be? Ah, that's what we want to know. That's what we want to uh, make certain of. Now, remember, church of God, church of Yahusha, church or the body of Yahusha, the bride of Yahusha. We should be part of that. We should be part of that. Now, remember, that bride of Yahusha. That body of Yahusha, it already was apostatized in an old, after, the, after Yahusha went to the heavens and the death of the apostles. It turned away from God. But there was a prophecy. Remember, there is a prophecy, the prophecy at the ends of the earth. 
We already know that at, in the islands of the sea. But that prophecy did not end in the islands of the sea. There is also West that is being referred to in the prophecy. Now, the people who were prophesied in the islands of the sea, according to the prophecy itself, will betray God. They will become traitors. They will follow a leader that doesn't belong to God, but he still claims he is godly, but his work is not. That's why we have to be wise, beloved brethren. Who are we going to follow? Be, may, be certain that we must be in the church that actually belongs to the owner, Yahushua HaMashiach, because it was given to him. Remember <clears throat> what we have already studied many times. <clears throat> That's why the wisdom that we got is uh, biblical, sensical, and logical. That's what we got right this very moment. They can question what we believe. We can give them an answer that is not coming from us, but coming from what we can read. So the church that belongs to God and to Yahushua HaMashiach is confirmed by prophecies. The prophecies, well, you can join them if you want to. Is there salvation there? You might be saved there. We are not saying you cannot be saved with other churches because the salvation <clears throat> for those who belong to the Christ or to Hamashiach or belong to Yahusha will be on the first resurrection. And the salvation of those who were not able to join him or those who don't believe him or believe him in a wrong way, <clears throat> their salvation will be on the day of judgment. What's the difference? Well, the difference is that the salvation on the first resurrection is secured. You don't need to face the judge. There will be no book of Acts that will be open because those who will be saved on that day, the day of the rapture or the first resurrection, those who truly belong to Yahushua HaMashiach will meet him in the air. In a blink of an eye, it will take place because they were the ones whom he died for. How about those who don't belong to him or those who believe him in a wrong way, but they are kind? Your salvation will be on the day of judgment. That's what we can read in the Bible. That's what the Bible is saying. That's why if there is a religious group, that's what we used to believe. They are included in the first resurrection and they will be saved on the day of judgment. Come on, make up your mind. Which way are you gonna be saved? Where are you gonna be saved? Remember what we have already reminded everybody before we read a verse, it's present, past, and future. <clears throat> and not only that, <clears throat> we were all reminded, <clears throat> beloved brethren, about <clears throat> salvation, right? From where are we going to be saved from? What are we saved to? When are we going to receive that? And who will save us? How he is going to save us? Always be reminded of all of those things that we have to be reminded of. Now, <clears throat> how else does the Bible call the followers of the Christ or Yahushua HaMashiach or the assembled God's people in the flock? How else does the Bible call them? Let us listen to this. Uh, we are going to learn a little bit of, uh, of uh, Hebrew. And this is what we can read in 1 Corinthians 1, 9, ASV, and then Sefer. God is faithful through whom ye were called into the fellowship of his son, Yahushua the Christ, our Lord. Elohim is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Yahushua HaMashiach, our Adonai. And in eleven twenty six of Sefer, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the called out assembly and taught much people. And the Talmudim, or followers, Talmudim is followers, were called Mashiachim, which is also Christian, first in Antioch. So, we can call ourselves Christians. We can call ourselves Mashiachim. 
Mashiach. Mashiach, Hamashiach, it means the Christ. Christian came from that word, Christ. Mashiachim came from the word Hamashiach. Now we learn something. So, how else does the Bible call the followers of the Christ? Mashiachim or Christians? We can also call them. The followers of Yahushua. Talmidim Yahushua. So we are learning about little things of our Lord's language. We might not learn the whole of it, but at least, you know, important words like followers, like we are Christians, we can learn a little bit. His name, the most important thing that we have learned in Hebrew, his name, because that name, Yahushua, has a meaning, and the meaning is, I am he who saved. God and Yahusha's name put together. So I imagine, we don't know that before. We keep on copying, you know, in the Iglesia, where we came from, we keep on copying, actually, uh, the teaching of the Catholic Church. When they, you know, the Catholic Church introduced the name of the Savior. In Spanish, that's why it's in Spanish. What's the name of the Savior? Jesus or Jesus. And then we keep on believing that. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And then the Iglesia keeps on attacking the, the Pope. Oh, he's a false prophet. He's a false prophet. Why do you believe that the name of the Savior is Jesus? If he is a false prophet. So you, doesn't make sense, isn't it? That's why we need to keep on telling them. Hey, listen to what we have discovered. Share it with them, what we have discovered. The name is not Jesus. The name for salvation is Yahushua. That's the name. Now, what did our Lord or Adonai, Yahushua, promise those who are baptized and truly are his followers or Talmidim? The true Mashiachim or the true Christians. Let us read. Mark 16, 16 of Amplified. He who has believed in me and has been baptized will be saved from the penalty of God's wrath and judgment. But he who has not believed will be condemned. <coughs> now, beloved brethren, our question was, what did our Lord or Adonai, Yahushua, promise those who are baptized and truly are his followers, or Talmidim, the true Hamashiachim, or Christians. Well, you have heard, salvation from Yahuwah's wrath or punishment. When will that be meted out, Yahuwah's wrath? The day of judgment. So those who truly belong to the Christ, or the Talmidim of Hamashiach, or Talmidim, of Yahushua will be saved from God's wrath or punishment on the day of judgment. Now, those who truly belong to him, they will be saved on the day of the first resurrection. And those who did good might be saved. They might, they, they might be saved. I don't know. There's no guarantee there now, but there will be some salvation there on the second resurrection. Now, if you are going to choose salvation, which way you want to be at? First resurrection or the second resurrection? Well, make a choice. I want first resurrection. You have to be with the assembly or the church or the body or the bride that Yahushua will marry in heaven. You should be there. Remember. The Lord added to the kahal or to the church or to the body or to the assembly, those who are being saved. And then from there, he will choose who will represent the true church, which is the chaste virgin. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, which is salvation? Uh, the salvation uh, that we are going to have is on the salvation on the day of the first 
resurrection as recorded in 1 Thessalonians 4.17. <clears throat> now, if you have a pen, write it down. 1 Thessalonians 4.17, of amplified version of the Bible, you can read, then we who are alive and remain <clears throat> on the earth will simultaneously be caught up or ruptured together with them, the resurrected ones in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. That is our salvation. That is where we want to be part of, beloved brethren. And who will be part of that? Those who were added by God in the church, in the kahal, or in the body, in the church that belongs to Yahushua Messiah, the one that was prophesied in the Holy Scriptures. You have to be part of that. <clears throat> yes, we, ad we admit <clears throat> that the Iglesia de Cristo has prophecy until 2009. In 2009, the prophecy became sour for you. Why? Because the prophecy was fulfilled. There will be a leader who will be like a leader of Sodom and Gomorrah, who will be like the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, who will be uh, not helping the widow or those who will... Uh, um, be with murderers and thieves and so on and so forth. It happened. And also the prophecy of Isaiah in uh, 24 of New International Version <clears throat> that says there will be betrayal because the singing that the, the Bible actually made mention of is no longer dedicated to the righteous one or to Yahuwah, our God, but there will be singing or psalms that will be dedicated to an unrighteous person. That happened. Well, unless you know you can disprove that, that it did not happen to you. It happened. So now the prophecy is about, it continued. The prophecy is about the very small remnant. We were gathered by God. It happened. As we would like to remind you again, it happened in California, January 19, 2019. It happened. But after it happened, you know, when we were gathered, God introduced his name. God renamed all of us. But unfortunately, there are still some who doesn't want to believe it. They separated from us. Well, they are no longer part of the church that God put people to attain salvation in the first resurrection. They could attain salvation too, but that will be on the day of judgment. That's what we believe. That's what we can read. That's what the Bible teaches. So it's biblical, it's logical, and it is sensical. Now that we are part of the assembled people of Yahuwah in the church or in the flock, does God expect us to do something to fully confirm our inclusion in the rapture or in the first resurrection? What are we supposed to do? What should those who were added by Yahuwah in the flock be careful of. This is what we have to be careful of, beloved brothers and sisters or fellow Yahushans. Let us read what the Apostle Paul recorded in Ephesians 5.15. Therefore, see that you walk carefully, living life with honor, purpose, and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil, not as unwise, but as wise, Sensible with common sense, intelligent with lots of wisdom, discerning people. So what should those who were added by Yahuwah in the flock be careful of? Well, we have to be careful on how we live our life, especially right now that we were not just added into the flock or into the fold. We were actually chosen to be part of the very small remnant. We have to live life with honor. Are we honorable? Are we true to what we say? Or we say something and we do any, something else? You know? You preach to people, love your parents, but you don't love yours. You preach to people to be kind, but you are not kind. You preach to people that you have to be humble, but you're not humble. You're so arrogant. See? What else? Purpose. Live in, with purpose. What is the purpose? That we, we were created by God to praise and honor his name. 
courage. Are we courageous? Or are you scared to speak up? You see, beloved brothers, sisters in the faith, we must be courageous. Life with sensibility and wisdom. How do we do that? We shun those who does, shun those who does, and or tolerate evil. You know, there are people who keep on telling us, <laughs> you know what? I will give my offering to God. It doesn't matter if those who are in charge to take care of it will squander it. They will answer it to God. Oh, really? You are actually like tolerating evil. You keep on giving, you say, oh, I gave it to God. Are you sure you gave it to God? See, that's the question. And so if there is an Iglesia de Cristo listening in this worship service, think about that. You cannot say that because you are tolerating their evil. Oh, I'm not. You are. If you're not tolerating evil, you're not tolerating their wrongdoings, you will speak up. Oh, I will be expelled. So what? If you got expelled from their organization, you will be put by God into where you should be, which is what? The place where there is salvation. Now, how can we prove that we are truly careful on how we live our lives? Let us read what the Apostle Paul again said, Colossians 2, 6 to 7. Therefore, as you have received Hamashiach, Yahusha, the Lord, walk in union with him. See, we have to walk with Yahushua HaMashiach. One with him, not one with a leader. Don't be one with me. Let us all be one with him, Yahushua HaMashiach. Reflecting his character in the things you do and say. Yahushua is not afraid of saying the truth. He was murdered because he said the truth. Remember, in things you do and say. See, we have to reflect the character of Yahushua in everything we do and say. Living lives that lead others away from sin. You see, not telling everybody to hate their parents. Simply because they are not of the same belief that you are. Having been deeply rooted in him. In Yahushua, not in a leader of a religious organization. Okay, those leaders are also seeking for their salvation. They are not your savior. That's why when a preacher, like the preacher that I know, that we know, when he says those words, can they offer salvation? We will keep on scrutinizing those words until you retract to that. You cannot offer salvation. I can't offer salvation. Yahushua can offer salvation to everybody. But you have to make certain that you have understood. We have understood how salvation works. Like what we are studying right now. Being deeply rooted in him. <clears throat> and now being continually <clears throat> built up in him. And becoming increasingly more established. In your faith, just as you were taught and overflowing in it with gratitude or thanksgiving. You see, that's why we will never stop thanking God because of what we got, beloved brethren. That is the proof that we are careful on how we live our lives. We thank God because we know we are actually doing what is right. We are increasingly more established in our faith, just as we were taught. How, how established are we? We can explain what we believe. You asked us before, when we were so-called Iglesia de Cristo way back then, we cannot even explain. Only minister can explain what they believe. But if you are not a minister, even what, the, what they call like a uh, head deacon or whatever they call themselves a bishop, they cannot explain what they believe. See, salvation. They cannot even explain that. They have no idea that the kingdom of Yahushua, where he will become 
King of kings and Lord of lords will be here on earth. And the seat of power will be in Jerusalem right now. In Jerusalem today. They don't even know that. That the animals, the lions will no longer eat other animals. But the lions will eat grass like it will become what? Herbivore. Instead of being a carnivore and a predator, lions will become herbivores. All of those predators will become herbivores. All of those poisonous snakes will no longer become poisonous. They don't even know about that. Why? They lack wisdom. Why are they lacking wisdom? Because they were just called, but they did not continue to be part of God's assembly or God's people who will meet the Lord in the air. They turn their backs. And we are so fortunate having that. <clears throat> we are well established in our faith. One who is well established in faith will never neglect the worship service like this, right? <clears throat> we believe that. The worship service is the first thing we look for. One who is steadfast established in faith is united with the head of the church, the chief shepherd, the only executive minister of the church that can't be replaced by anyone. Yahushua HaMashiach. You see, that title was given to Yahushua HaMashiach. What proves that? You can read it in the Bible. All authority was given to me in heaven and on earth and in heaven. That's what Yahushua said. Ang lahat ng kapamahalaan in Tagalog ay ipinigay na sa akin sa lupa at sa langit. Lahat. Pangkalahatan. Ang lahat ng kapamahalaan. Pamamahala. Ibinigay kanino? Kay Yahushua. It was given to Yahushua. All authority was given to Yahushua. So nobody can take that place. But there are people who try to do that. Catholic Church, the Pope, says he is the biker of the Son of God. How are you going to replace someone who is still alive? Sitting there on the side, right side of God. How can you replace him? And then you said he's the biker of the Son of God? He will send somebody not to replace him or to become his biker, but to probably an ambassador for him. Well, that's good. Ambassador for the Christ. And that's who we are. That's where the, who were the, the apostles were. They are ambassadors for the Christ. But they are not the vikers of the Christ. There is one who said, oh, you know what? The one who became the, the executive minister during the time of the apostle was James. Oh, you cannot read that, that he became that. It's just like a twisted what? doctrine that you injected into the minds of many people and millions of Iglesia. One, me, was duped by that too. <laughs> Probably those Yahushans today was also believing the same way, right? That James was the first executive minister where, when he was not. See? <clears throat> the chief shepherd <clears throat> is Yahushua HaMashiach. He was yesterday, today, and forever. A member who is established in the faith will never be persuaded or tempted to do wrong even by those so-called religious leaders or ministers. We cannot lead a Yahushian to go against the will of God. If we inject something here that is not biblical, a Yahushian, a true Hamashiachim or Christian, will reject it right away. Because that's where we were taught to, beloved brethren. That's what we have to make certain of in order for us to be part of the first resurrection, which is our salvation. Now, what should each of us, Yahushians or Hamashiachim, 
always make certain of putting to good use. Here it is. <clears throat> Colossians 4, 5 to 6. When you are with unbelievers, oh, probably there are lots of unbelievers don't believe the way we do, right? <clears throat> always make good use of the time. That's what is being instructed to us. Be pleasant and hold their interest when you speak the message. Choose your words carefully and be ready to give answers to anyone who asks questions. You see, beloved brethren, what should each of us, every Yahushian or Hamashiachim, always make certain of putting to good use? Let's put to good use our time. See, how are we going to put you to good use our time? By speaking about the message that we have received. See the, the truth that we have received? It is biblical, it is sensical, and it is what? Logical. Share it with others every time you have an opportunity. Share it with others. Just telling them, you know what? Do you, do you believe in God? Or people might say, yes, I do. Do you pray to God? Yes, I do. Do you believe in, believe in his son? Yes, I do. And he, most likely he will say, I believe in Jesus, you know? And then Jesus is not actually his name. His name is Yahusha. Simple, you know, the simple instruction that we are giving them or simple uh, wisdom that we're going to give them. How can be, how can Jesus be his name when he is a Hebrew and not Spanish? That's it. <clears throat> He's not Spanish, so he must not have that name, Jesus. So that alone will strike a good conversation, but be careful and, and be careful what we say that the Bible clearly stated. Choose your words, right? Don't, don't be offensive to anybody. That's what God is telling us. What else? <clears throat> Give answer to anyone who asks questions. You see, there are people, it was our experience before, beloved brethren, when we were still Iglesia and Cristo members, you know. Majority of the members, when, when they share their faith, and then people, especially the, what we call the born-again Christian, because they are well-versed than the Iglesia and Cristo, when it comes to biblical teachings or biblical uh, readings, they, they, they are well-versed in Bible than the Iglesia and Cristo, you know. <clears throat> members, I should say. When uh, they are asked, they will say, oh, you know what? I cannot answer that question. I'm going to call the minister. See, the Bible is clear. Choose your words. It's not just ministers being referred to here, but all those who are believers. Speak the message, choose your words, and be ready to give answers to anyone who asks questions. That's why in the Church of Yahusha, we are, we are encouraging you, beloved brethren, if we wish, if we want, to be part of that first resurrection, which we are all now hoping for, we have to make certain that we learn all of these things. We have to make certain that we do what God requires us to do. And one of which is be pleasant and hold their interest when you speak the message, choose your words carefully, and be ready to give answers to anyone who asks questions. Be able to share what you believe, beloved brethren. So that 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 uh, reward that will be given, just sort of imagine how big is the reward. Do you think uh, the step that we are going to do is just like a small one? No, it's it's lots of steps that we have to make in order for us to be included in the first resurrection. Yes, we are on the right prophesied assembly, church, or religious uh, movement, or body, or the body of Yahusha. You know, we, we, we are on the right track. But in order for us to be really represent the real church, which is the chaste virgin, on the day of the first resurrection, we have to make certain that we have put into good use our time. We have spoken about the message to the people. We have done our part. Beloved brethren. 
Let's do our part. We encourage you. Let's do our part. Let's keep on sharing what we believe. You know, we don't need to convince them to believe it. All we need to do is to share it with them in every opportune time. Make good use of our time doing that. Now, where will it lead us when we live the life we should tread? You know, here in Revelation 2, 7, good speed. Let everyone who can hear listen to what the Spirit says to the churches of Talmudim. I will permit him who is victorious to eat the fruit of the tree of life that stands in the paradise of God. You see, that's a double thing that we are going to receive. It will lead us to be with the Christ, reign with him, and it also will lead us to that paradise of God. There are two paradise that uh, we already know. When we reign with Yahushua, it's paradise. When we enter again the holy city and be there with God forever and ever, that's another paradise. That's what we can read in the scriptures. You see, we will be sure of all of these promise. We'll be victorious and we'll be in the paradise of God. Now remember that um, the millennial kingdom, what are we going to be there? What are we going to be? Reigning with Yahushua, our Mashiach, as immortals, people who already have eternal life, mingling with those who don't have eternal life. So I imagine. And we are those who will be ruling the people. Who, who, Yahushua is the ruler. We will be helping him rule in that millennial kingdom. And then when we are supposed, when we're about to, at the very end of that uh, millennial kingdom, or after a thousand years, there will be a little bit of chaos trying to conquer the city where Yahushua sat. Then there will be fire that will come down, will become lake of fire, because the devil was actually uh, <clears throat> released from his prison. He will go out and deceive many nations, the four corners of the world, Gog and Magog, if you remember that. And he will deceive many people, as many as the son of the sea. So many people, although they were already living in the millennial kingdom, they will still go in for the devil after a while. After that 1,000 years, I imagine how stubborn people are. And that time, they can no longer, they can no longer complain. But God, when God punished them, <clears throat> because God already gave them <clears throat> 1,000 years. <clears throat> then after 1,000 years, you still went for the devil's lure, you will be in the lake of fire. See, beloved brethren, how are we going, going to go? <clears throat> it's not as simple as we thought. That salvation is not simple as we thought. It's complex, but it's easy. The steps are easy. How is it going to happen? We, have, we already know. Now, what is it that we are all reminded of to make certain of that victory in order for us to receive the entirety, the whole package here in 2 Timothy 4, 7, 8? I have fought well, I have finished the race, and I have been faithful. So a crown will be given to me for pleasing the Lord. He judges fairly, and on the day of judgment, he will give a crown to me and to everyone else who wants him to appear with power. See, that's what we're going to have. What is it that we are all reminded of to make sure of our victory? Fight well by finishing our race. You know, because when we fight well, finishing our race, there are two, uh, you know, two, two ends that we already know. End of our life. We are fighting well, and then we die. You know, we succumb to death, or we stop breathing. Then we finish our race. <clears throat> then we keep on fighting. We are still alive, and we got included in the rapture. Then we finish our race. And, and that, when we got included in that resurrection, the entire enchilada will be given unto us, actually. You know, you will reign with Yahushua the Christ. And then on the day of judgment, you will again re-enter the holy city. It's already done. So we are aiming, beloved Bridget, as 
Yahushua's to be part of the first resurrection. Now, how can we fight well in the race of faith? Matthew 6, 33, 34. But more than anything else, put God's work first and do what he wants. Then the other things will be yours as well. Don't worry about tomorrow if it will take care of itself. You have enough to worry about today. So how can we fight well in the race of faith? Well, according to what we have read, be sure what we are actually prioritizing. What must we prioritize? Prioritize God's work. So what is your priority right now, beloved? I don't know your priority, but I know mine. I can assure myself my priority is God's work. How about you? What's your priority? Right now, what are you doing? What are you supposed to be doing? Are you not, are you not supposed to be preparing or you are already being, being here and worshiping God? And when you are here, that's a good thing. See, if our priority is not God's work, think about it. You know? And then we want to be rewarded with eternal life, with uh, that uh, immortality, with that power to reign with Yahusha in his millennial kingdom. And we're not going to do exert any effort to doing that? No. If we wish to be part of that thing, we have to put God's work first and do what he wants. Well, that's clear. That's clear. What will be the result if we have the right priority in our everyday life? Then the other things will be yours as well. This verse, beloved brethren, is telling us how to get all of our needs met. We need to seek the kingdom of God first, but we need to know where it is and how it works. You see? The kingdom of God is within us, within you and me. The kingdom of God has come to earth. Yahushua over and over again tells us that the kingdom is inside of us. He said, you are the temple. We will dwell in you. We will sit in you. That's the kingdom. That's the faith that he gave us. It's important to know that God's kingdom is a system of seed, process, and harvest. Therefore, this verse in Matthew chapter 6 can also be translated as seek first, seed, time, process time, and harvest time. And all those things that you need shall be added unto you. So if you don't plant the seed of our faith, no matter how big it is or how powerful it is, we get nothing. You just got not faith, but you got fanaticism or blind faith, blind following. It must be cultivated. The faith must be cultivated. Until the harvest comes, we must reap the harvest. And the harvest for you and me as Yahushan will be on the rapture or the day of the rapture or the day of the first resurrection. That will be the harvest for us. This means, beloved brethren, we have to water our faith constantly with God's word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing God's word spoken to us by Yahushua and his apostles. The scripture is clear in Romans 10, 17. No one can have faith without hearing the message about Hamashiach. That's recorded in Romans 10, 17. You cannot have faith unless you know what you are going to believe. You see, there are many people, oh, I am a believer, I have faith. Explain to me what you believe. They cannot explain it. Explain why the day of judgment is your target, not the first resurrection. Why are always saying you will be saved on the day of judgment when there is a salvation to be meted out on the first resurrection? Oh, I'm also part of that. Explain, how did you become part of the first resurrection and then we'll become part again of the second resurrection? How did it happen? Then you cannot explain it anymore. So you don't have faith. You have fanaticism in you. That's sad, right? Wake up. <clears throat> now why <clears throat> are we certain that if we put first God's work above anything else, Yahuwah will accept us? Well, this is why he said, 
This is what the Apostle Paul wrote, Hebrews 10, 38, 39. The people of God, the people God accepts will live because of their faith, not because of your fanaticism, not because of our, we are fanatical, you know, it's not like that. But he isn't pleased with anyone who turns back. We are not like those people who turn back and get destroyed. We will keep on having faith until we are saved. See, we will keep on having faith until we are saved. How are we going to accomplish that? We must learn and learn and learn and learn and learn every day the words of God to have faith. Remember what Yahushua, Hamashiach, or what the Apostle Paul said in Romans 10, 17. CEV, if you have a pen, write it down. No one can have faith without hearing the message about Yahushua, Hamashiach. Without hearing those messages, you cannot have faith. We don't just use our faith in times of crisis, beloved brethren. We are meant to live our lives by faith each and every day of our life. But how do we live by faith on a day-to-day -day basis? We should stop doing it our own way. Instead, we must do things God's way. The only way we can do this is if we have the word of God in us. You can't have faith without the word. And you can't have the word without faith. We can't receive something by faith if we have no word. Faith and the word go hand in hand. This is how we can be sure that we will be included in the first resurrection. Prioritize the kingdom of God or God's work. And we will surely be rewarded beloved brethren that's what we want to be this is how we should tread our lives it, every day of our life should be based on the scriptures that's why we keep on sharing with you we keep on telling you please read the scriptures and read every every scripture that we have read before you go to sleep before you go to bed before after this worship service read it over and over again it is important. Salvation, I cannot save anybody. I cannot even save my own children, my wife. You cannot save me, I cannot save you. I can only work for my own salvation. But I'm sharing what I found out because that is how I am working for my own salvation. And one of our ministers, Brother Ernie, is doing the same thing. We are in unison with this, sharing what we believe because we want to be part, to be inclusive in that first resurrection. That's what we want. I want that personally. Do you want that? Do what we were doing too. Share what you believe. Live by faith. Know the words of God. Know what should we believe in. And we will be sure of that promise eternal life that will be given on the first, on the day of the first resurrection. May God continue to bless us. May we continue to keep this message in us and keep on remembering. Let us arise for our prayer. Merciful Father, Yahuwah, our God, thank you so much for you are always instructing us what to believe what to do in order for us to keep <coughs> our relationship with you. <clears throat> that on the day of the rapture, the day that your begotten son, Yahushua, our savior, will be, meet his kahal or church in the air. We will be included because you have explained to us how it works. And we saw it. We believe it because it is so biblical, very sensible, and very logical. It doesn't conflict each other. It is clear on how you are going to met out your judgment, 
is not in the blink of an eye. There will be a process. There will be, oh Father, there will be a, a steps that you will take before you judge the world. We understand why, Father, because you are kind, you are so loving, you are giving every human being a chance for that salvation. If they miss the first one, they will never miss the second one if they will follow you. But if they turn their backs from you after you have given them all of the chances that you are giving, and that will be the time you are going to unleash your anger to this world, and that will be the end of everything. Father, there are lots of people who still need to understand what we have understood. And many of them are our loved ones. With such certainty to face you on the day of judgment. But certainly is when your son vouches for them on the day of the first resurrection. Father, let them hear what you have taught us. Let them learn what you have taught us, that they will be part of this movement that was established by your big a long, long time ago. Father, we will continue to praise you and honor your name. We will continue to be thankful unto you, not twice, not twice a year, but every day of our life. Every time we wake up and we pray, we thank you. And we will continuously thank you for the rest of our journey. Father, please bless us as we separate our ways. There will be next important time that we will gather once again and be fed by your words. Please help us, deliver us from anything that will endanger our lives. Please kill us of our sicknesses. Prolong the life that you have given us. We will serve you for the rest of our journey. We ask, please bless every family, bless our children, bless our grandchildren, that they may continue to finish the race too, as you have designed them to, to be. We believe that you have heard our prayers. For all of this, we are asking in the name of your begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. saving grace of our Lord and Savior Yahushua HaMashiach, the love of our Abba, Yahuwah, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us today and forever. Amen. Beloved brethren, a few reminders once again that us share our faith to others and we can actually <coughs> share with them our worship service via Zoom at 403-356-689 or via Facebook Live. You can also share our website, www.churchofyahusha.org. <clears throat> if they want to listen or uh, learn about what we believe, it's there. If they need to question what we believe, they can, and we will give them the answer. Bible studies will review our declaration of faith, and also <clears throat> uh, 1,000 1 billion question program is on the air every every uh, Thursday, that will be uh, 8 p.m. New York time. Growing Up Yahushan, available on YouTube and Facebook and also on our uh, website. <clears throat> and uh, may we always uh, be in unison with our Lord and Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach, in everything we do. This concludes our worship service. May we all have a very good Sunday. Take to all the precious words, take to all the
Yeah.